In this video, we derive by hand the partial derivatives of quadratic cost with respect to the parameters of a simple single point regression model. In the preceding video, we, in our single point regression gradient notebook, executed step one of our four step machine learning process, where we have a forward pass and create a estimate of what our output should be, y hat, using our, in this case, our regression model with two simple parameters, m and b. So we pass in a single point x, that gives us our estimate y hat. In step two, we compare that estimate with the true value y to calculate cost c, specifically quadratic cost. And in step three, we used automatic differentiation to calculate the partial derivative of cost with respect to m and b. So del c del m and del c del b, we got these very specific values. So now what we're going to do is instead of relying on automatic differentiation in this third of four steps in our machine learning process, we are going to determine by hand the partial derivatives of cost with respect to our model parameters. So the cost function that we were using in our single point regression notebook was quadratic cost, which works on single points of data. And here's what the cost function looks like. This is our quadratic cost function. So we have our estimate of y, y hat, we subtract the true value, the known output y from the estimate y hat, and then we square it. So that's our quadratic cost. And we'd like to be able to differentiate, to calculate the partial derivative all the way through to the model parameters m and b that themselves determine y hat here. So we're going to chain together a number of partial derivatives. So let's start with this function here. Well, even this function, this quadratic cost function, is actually two nested functions. So if we consider y hat minus y to be uh, equal to something, so let's say u, this is our inner function in this nested function. And then the outer function is c equals u squared. All right, so by breaking our quadratic cost into these two simpler nested functions, it's even easier to calculate partial derivatives. All right, so let's start by differentiating the inner function first. So we are interested in del u del y hat. We're actually not at all interested in del u del y because y is just a data point that we have from our training data. What we are interested in ultimately is calculating the partial derivative of cost with respect to our model parameters m and b. And our model parameters m and b are what determine y hat. So we'll deal with that later, but for now um, know that what matters here in this equation is the partial derivative del u del y hat. And we can, you know, there's no point in calculating del u del y. We wouldn't need that. So in order to calculate del u del y hat, according to the partial derivative rules, when we differentiate variables other than the variable that we're differentiating with respect to, which in this case is y hat, are considered to be constants. So this term here that just has y in it is treated as a constant. And so when we take the partial derivative, this term simply becomes zero. That's according to the constant rule that we discussed a long time ago in this Machine Learning Foundation series back in subject three on calculus one, where we first learned the derivative rules. Um, and then this term here, y hat, um, this is actually y hat to the power of one invisibly. And so when we apply the power rule, another derivative rule that we learned long ago, when we apply that power rule to y hat, y hat to the power of one becomes one times y hat to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero becomes one, and one times one is one. <laughs> so ultimately, all we're left with when we simplify one minus zero to one is that del u del y hat is equal to one. Simple enough. And the other partial derivative on this slide can be computed here. So we can calculate del c del u and as it happens, this is actually a full derivative because there are no 
other variables here. It's a univariate function. So the full derivative, dc du, is equal to the partial derivative, del c del u. And it's pretty simple to calculate. According to the power rule, u to the power of 2 becomes 2 times u to the power of 1, which simplifies to 2u. And now that we have 2u, we can bring our nested function back into the picture, y hat minus y, and substitute that in for u. Okay, now that we have del c del u, which is equal to 2 times y hat minus y, and we have del u del y hat, which is equal to 1, we can start chaining partial derivatives together. So we can chain together del c del u and del u del y hat, and by multiplying those by each other, the del u's will cancel out, and we're left with del c del y hat. So substituting in the expressions that we already have, so del c del u is equal to this expression here, we put it here, and we multiply that by del u del y hat, which is simply equal to 1. So multiplying anything by 1 leaves us just with whatever that is. And so del c del y hat comes out to 2 times y hat minus y. Nice. So that gives us a piece of the puzzle. Now we just need a couple more partial derivatives, and we can chain all the way from cost to our model parameters. So the other piece of the puzzle is differentiating y hat with respect to our model parameters m and b. So recall our simple function of a line is y hat equals mx plus b. So we're going to need two different partial derivatives here. We can start off with, say, del y hat del b, because it's the simpler partial derivative of the two, so I guess let's start there. And again, when we take partial derivatives, anything that isn't the variable of interest, in this case b, is treated as a constant. So this entire term here with the variables m and x, we treat those as constants, and according to the constant rule, they become zero. Now this term, according to the power rule, because this is really b to the power of one, becomes one times b to the power of zero when we differentiate it, and anything to the power of zero is one, times one is one. So del y hat del b is equal to zero plus one, and that simplifies very nicely to one. All right, so now we have del y hat del b, but we also need del y hat m. So in this case, we treat x and b as constants when we're differentiating with respect to m. And so this term here has only a constant in it. So according to the constant rule, it becomes a zero. In this term here, we have m and x. So x we just treat as a constant while we differentiate m. Well, just like b, m is really m to the power of 1. According to the power rule, it becomes m to the power of 0 times 1, which just ends up working out to 1. Then according to the constant multiple rule or constant product rule, we can bring x back into the picture. And so we have 1 times x plus 0, which simplifies to just x. All right, so now we have del y hat del m, and we have del y hat b. We have all of the pieces of puzzle that we need to chain together all the way from cost to these model parameters. Let's see how. So from two slides ago, we have del c del y hat, which is equal to this here. And from the most recent slide, we have del y hat m and del y hat b, right? So now we can chain them all together. So to get del c del m, for example, we can chain together del c del y hat and del y hat m. The del y hats cancel out, and we're left with del c del m. So let's throw the actual expressions in there. So del c del y hat is here. We multiply it by del y hat m and simplifying the way that this looks a little bit, moving the x inside the brackets, we see that del c del m is equal to 2x times y hat minus y. Nice. So that's, that's it. That's the partial derivative of cost with respect to our model parameter m. Now, from there, it's pretty simple to calculate del c del b. So same kind of situation as here. We have del c del y hat 
and we multiply that now by del y hat del b, and the del y hats will cancel out, leaving us just with del c del b. So this is some pretty simple arithmetic because now we just have del c del y hat, and we multiply that by one because del y hat b is just one. So simple enough, we find that in the end, del c del b is equal to two times y hat minus one. So now that we have our two partial derivatives, let's go back to our Jupyter notebook and plug in the real world values that we have, the real numbers that we have, and confirm that these manual derivations that we did come out to the same results that we had with automatic differentiation in PyTorch. Nice, so using PyTorch, so using the backward method from cost, we were able to compute that the partial derivative of c of cost with respect to m, that's del c del m, is about 109. And then the partial derivative of c with respect to b, del c del b, came out to 15 and a half. All right, so now we've derived del c and del b manually. So from the slides, we had that del c del m is equal to this here, and del c del b is equal to this. So Let's see if by plugging in the real values, our real y hat value, our real y value, our real x value, do we get the same as using autodiff? Yes, we do. So that del c del m that we calculated with PyTorch coming out to 108.78, we get the exact same value using the partial derivative that we figured out by hand. And let's see if we're just as lucky with del c del b. So here is the code to do this mathematics here. Uh, y hat minus y times two comes out to 15.54, which is exactly the same as we had when we used PyTorch to calculate that value. Nice, so this might seem like wizardry <laughs> when you see it for the first time. And so it could be worth going back and pausing the video at points, getting out a piece of paper, and driving these yourself by hand and confirming to yourself that this works. You know, this isn't wizardry, that by using partial derivatives, we can get to the same place as we do by using computational approaches to partial derivatives like automatic differentiation. Nice, and one final topic here is to talk about the actual gradient of cost. So we've been using that term a lot, gradient descent, gradients, but I haven't defined yet exactly what the gradient is. So that's what we're going to do right now. We just didn't have the background knowledge that we needed before for me to define it solidly. So the gradient of cost is often symbolized as this here, which is pronounced nabla C. So this character here, it's like an upside down delta and we call it nabla. And so this is a vector of all of the partial derivatives of C with respect to each of the individual model parameters. And so you could symbolize it as nabla C, as I just mentioned. Uh, sometimes it's symbolized like this with a subscript P indicating the model parameters. These are uh, equivalent and they're both equal to this here, which is a vector of all of the individual partial derivatives of cost with respect to each of the model parameters that we have in our model. So if you have n parameters in your model, then you're going to have n elements in your vector. And traditionally we then transpose so that it's a column vector is kind of the traditional way to represent it. So putting some real numbers in here, in the case of this notebook here, we only have two model parameters, the y-intercept b and the slope m. And so that's our entire uh, list. Those are all of the items that we have in our vector. And so our nabla c, our gradient, is composed of del c del b and del c del m. I elected to put these in alphabetical order by parameter. And so yeah, so to encode that in some PyTorch code here, I'm creating a PyTorch tensor that consists of del C del B, del C del M, you know, del C del B, del C del M, 
And then I transpose the tensor to make it a column vector, and voila, there is our gradient. Nice. Now that we know exactly what the gradient of cost is, we can appreciate better than ever what it means to descend the gradient of cost. More on that in the next video. To be sure not to miss the next video in this series, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for taking part in this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and comment. To be sure not to miss any of my content, head to johncrone.com and sign up for my email newsletter. You're also welcome to add me on LinkedIn. Simply mention that you're a viewer of the Machine Learning Foundation series. And finally, you can follow me on Twitter too if that's your social medium of choice.